Hey guys, the Fire Brothers here. It's just me. My brother couldn't be here today because he is mourning the loss of Angry Birds Transformers. R.A.P. Angry Birds, may you rest in heaven alongside Follow Cybertron and War for Cybertron. At least until the resurrect from the dead. Whenever that is. Anyways, these are the jokes. I hope you guys are enjoying them. News around Transformers 1 have been pretty negative lately, so negative in fact, I'm kinda sick of talking about them, so let's talk about something more fun, and that is cut content. Because surprisingly enough, Transformers 1 has cut content. Now granted, it's not as much as Rise of the Beast, but that's because Rise of the Beast was a pretty messy movie from the get-go. Like, I wouldn't call the production of Rise of the Beast a nightmare, but I will in fact say that uh, it could have been handled a whole lot better. When it comes to Transformers 1, there it's much less room for cut content, but there's still plenty of things worth talking about. And also, before we go on, spoilers for Transformers 1 if you haven't seen it already. I assume most of you guys have seen it by this point, though. Uh, by these box office numbers, it looks like the rest of the world still has it. But let's hope that that picks up in the upcoming weeks. Anyways. Transformers 1 was a really great movie, stellar movie, there was much less cut content for it because they knew what they were doing from the get-go and there was less messiness than something like from Rise of the Beast. However, one huge thing that I've seen people discuss lately and I know for a fact was part of cut content was Mirage slash Chromia. So, as you guys may know, in Transformers 1, when Orion, Pax, and D16 are entering the race, they're a hair away from winning the race. But then they suddenly get road killed by Chromia who transforms and starts yelling at the camera like a crazy lady. But actually, fun fact, did you know that originally, Mirage was the one who was gonna win the race? So this is allegedly is still not entirely confirmed, though there's really good evidence pointing to that fact, that during the test screenings in that scene, Mirage was the one that was gonna win the race and not Chromia. And henceforth, the reason why Chromia here looks a little bit like Mirage, you can sort of see it if you squint your eyes a bit. You can tell that on like RC, Moon, Racer, Firestar, and a bunch of the other female Transformers in the movies, you can tell that Chromia's head resembles the Generation 1 version of Mirage far more than Chromia herself. There's also the whole thing about Mirage getting an Icon 5000 team toy. Now, Mirage was never exactly physically seen in the movie. I mean, he was seen, or at least look alike, so him, that, you know, without a cog, but we know Mirage was in the race so he had to have a cock. Yeah, I know, it's kinda confusing. The fact that Mirage was the one who got a toy and Chromia didn't despite winning the race is bizarre. So that has kinda like credence to this theory that Chromia was added into the race last second. And she stole Mirage's moment of glory. Exactly why this change was done, we don't exactly know. In all honesty, Blur, Override, and even Mirage, I feel like make more sense of winning the race than Chromia here. But alas, it is what it is. However, that's not the only character that was meant to be in the movie and was only taken out. So recently on Twitter, Jason Schreier has come up with a few very interesting looks at the concept art for Transformers 1. Now this is early concept art and it's working with an early version of the movie, so hence for why things like the Tomb of the Primes here doesn't look exactly look like the one from the movie. However, something very interesting is that we can see the Autobot Aerobolt from Robots in Disguise 2015. Yes, the same Aerobolt that recently appeared in the fourth anniversary you know, uh, Studio Trigger animation, which by the way, I made a whole video covering that whole thing in every single cameo we see in there. So you guys want to check that out? Link is going to be in the description down below. And we see that Aerobot here serves as some sort of guide for our main group, being Alita 1, B, Orion, and D16. Aerobot's design here is really in line with his Robots in Disguise counterpart with very little change. We also get a very early concept art look at Alpha Trion. He looks a little different in all honesty, but for the most part, you can still tell it's him. Not gonna lie, I sort of like this look a bit more than what we actually got in the movie. And right next to him, we can see Jetfire. Now, Jetfire was put here by Jason Schreier because he said he really liked Jetfire so he wanted to have him here and excuse to draw him. So he may have or may not have been, you know, originally intended to be in the movie. However, it is widely speculated that originally for this scene it was just not gonna be the Primes getting killed. Originally we were gonna see the High Guard also participate on this fight or at least see their corpses around. And it sort of does make sense considering that Jetfire here is a flyer type of character. So my guess is that there were gonna be, you know, the flyer, the High Guard, the Seekers in as part of this fight that, you know, Know, trying to defend the primes before eventually you know witnessing sentinel primes betrayal and you know just going rogue which is what starscream claims to have happened yet when that scene played out we never saw any of the high guard there so this whole thing does match up to that so this all got leaked with the um studio series toy when we first saw it but originally
originally, Optimus Prime's axe was meant to be blue. In fact, the early concept art here shows us a very early version of Optimus Prime here. He was going to have green truck windows and his energon was going to be blue instead of the traditional yellow we see him use in the movie. This matches with the toy and it was confirmed by Jason Schreier that was one of the colors they experimented on. It made it very far into development before eventually dialing it back to the final look we saw Optimus have in the movie. One scene I vividly remember from the trailer and I was surprised never made it into the movie is this little scene of Optimus, Alita, Shockwave, and Soundwave rolling out together. Now, I don't exactly know when this happens. It's very obviously towards the end of the movie, during the final fight, during the raid against Sentinel. But we see Soundwave and Shockwave transforming. My guess is that this scene happens right before Orion Pack saves D16 and before Soundwave frees the prisoners. Because we see him transforming for the first time here, alongside Shockwave. But it's very interesting that this little scene got removed. Because you could have added it and probably nothing would have changed. If, if anything, the raid on Icon Pass will probably flowed a little better. But I guess it is what it is. Taking a break from stuff from the trailers we never got to see. Another big change, and uh, this one I don't see people mentioning very often, and that's because like it's really obscure. But that is Megatron slash D16's previous backstory. So like we all know in the line continuity, Megatron was a gladiator from the pits of Kaon, and also a rapper. Which is a very different origin story for D16 than what we saw in TF1 where he's just a humble miner. However, originally the director Josh Cooley did mention that he wanted to at least have the aspect of D16 being a gladiator in the background as part of his backstory. Originally there was plans for a small scene where we were gonna revisit his gladiator past before becoming a miner. However, they said that they already had too much story and explanations and you know lore that they didn't want to add more to the film to confuse audiences. So for for simplicity's sake, they just kept D16 as a minor and basically discarded the whole gladiator backstory. I exactly if the whole gladiator thing in D16's life did happen, we don't know just yet. Maybe it did happen, it was just never explored in the movie, maybe it's canon, maybe it's not canon, we don't know just yet. We're gonna have to wait for a Transformers 2 to find that out, you know. Provided we do end up getting a Transformers 2. Anyways, going back to the concept art real quickly. Jason Shire recently released this concept art that is basically a very early version of the race. And now uh, he did win on record and commented on the comments down below that they didn't have any of the racers designed just yet. And that the Seekers were placed here as placeholders. While they still like tried to build the whole world slash backstory of Transformers 1. So originally some of the Seekers were going to be part of the race. But ultimately they were scrapped and you know. They were just instead random flying Cybertron every here and there. Though at least one of them did make it to the race, although he was a Roblox exclusive. Anyways, so one of the things that also comes from very early in the movie that was caught was when the gang gets their teacups for the first time. Now, it is very hard to confirm these uh, reports because these are alleged and these are from way back when before the movie got released. But I remember vividly one of the most credible sources which got most of the movie right apparently and even gave us the early sketch of D16 and Orion Pax which turned out to be true so that was a pretty reliable source. I remember that our source made the claim that in the movie when Orion Pax, D16 and everyone else got their teacups for the first time, they started transforming into various different shapes. Some will be, you know, shapes, some will be like different beings. Vehicles like motorcycle cars, trucks, planes at one point. And that's something that never happened in the movie. It is possible that originally the moment where they get their teacups was gonna be played more for comedic effect. Like, oh my god, I'm shifting and I can't control it. You know, kind of what ended up happening during the fight against the Death Trackers, but earlier before that. Kind of glad this got changed because, again, I feel like the movie already had way too much comedy and needed more serious moments. So I'm glad they decided to cut that out. Another thing that got cut out is several pieces of dialogue from the trailers. While some of these are very small lines that are very inconsequential and stuff, other ones are more... I don't know, important. So just very quickly, I'm gonna summarize some of them. You two, come with me. Darwin's you two, come with me was caught. Woo! Bombis little woo got caught. We've got these powers for a reason. A little one's comment about powers also got caught. And this was really interesting because if you think about it, Bumblebee, Orion, and D16 all got a thing, you know, some type of power slash ability to enhance them in combat. But a little one never really got anything. So maybe that line got cut off because a little one gets nothing. So that line will make no sense. I, I really don't know, honestly. For thousands of years, 
We have been at war, but before we were enemies, we were like brothers. Orion Pax's little speech about how him and Megatron used to be friends before becoming enemies. How was never in the movie? Or, or my theory here is that originally the movie was gonna start with narration from Optimus Prime, you know, recalling how everything started and how him and D16 were basically brothers at one point. You know, bringing the whole thing of like we were brothers once from the Michael Bay universe full circle. I look he wished this was kept, but I understand why they got rid of it. Maybe it's just me, but he's different. Yeah, yeah, no, I picked up on that. I picked up on that too. The comments that Leader 1 and B do in relation to Megatron were also not in the movie. What happened to my best friend? The infamous what happened to my best friend, which me and my friend grew, we meme a lot. Um, surprisingly enough, that also wasn't in the movie, despite being a lot of the trailers and TV spots. Where's Optimus Prime? There is a bit of trailer deception for the final trailer. Uh, the two guards, KQ-12 and KQ-1, uh, watch my video covering all the movie characters, uh, those are their names. Ask where Optimus Prime is. I don't think even, it's even then, because I don't think they sound like that in the movie, but they ask where Optimus Prime is. And this is weird because Optimus Prime is not born till the end of the movie. So my guess is that this was just exclusively done for the trailer. Still kind of weird though. There are more small little lines here and there that got caught. But I feel like those are the only ones that really matter. Or at least the ones that are the most interesting. Anyways, moving on. An early draft of the movie had a scene where Orion and D16 were playing an arcade game together. Yes, Red Alert wasn't the only gamer in the movie. They were going to play an 8-bit version of the touch. But the gag was eventually dropped. Although the arcade machine and a different reference to the song was made into the final film. Originally, the film would have ended on a smash cut of the film's title, accompanied by a redemption of the classic Transformers theme song. However, Cooley decided that the scene would be overly self-referential and instead asked Brian Tyler to make an original composition to close out the film to be cool and hip with the youth. And that's how we ended up with If I Fall. And I'll be honest, I don't like it. Now look, I I'll be honest here, I I'm saying the past, I don't like rap, it's not my genre of music. But I'll be completely honest, I like On My Soul way better. I feel like it was better used in Rise of the Beast, it had more... I don't know, like, I, 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 I buy with that a whole lot more than If I Fall, which I honestly feel like it's way too try hard, and the lyrics are just, eh. And personal opinion, I don't like it, like, when shows kind of just reference the, the title of the series and stuff that they're referencing to. It's like the Digimon Digi-Rap versus the Japanese Butterfly song. Like, Butterfly is a beautiful song that has its own message, which still relates to the show and stuff like that, and I just love that so much. And then you have the Digi-Rap, which is just Digimon over and over again. So yeah, needless to say, I don't like it. It goes on the bottom of my Transformer song tier list. And the final piece of cut content that we know and we have for this video is the fact that originally the movie was way different than the final theatrical release. So before Josh Cooley arrived, he saw the first draft and he said it was a silly, joke heavy script that was very different in tone from the final product. When first brought on to direct, Josh Cooley pushed for a more serious treatment to bring the film closer in line to the usual tone of the Transformers franchise. So if it wasn't for Josh Cooley, the movie was going to be more in tone with the first trailer instead of what we ended up getting. So someone in house was making really bad decisions because Josh Cooley had the right idea to add more series to it and people loved it. Hopefully for Transformers 2, Hasbro and Paramount will learn their lesson. And also Fire Lorenzo what they're at it. But yeah guys, that's pretty much all the cut content we have for Transformers 1 so far. Now the Blu-ray is going to get released sometime soonish. We don't exactly know when though pre-orders are up for that. And in the description of the Blu-ray it says that it's going to have some more delete the content. I highly doubt we're gonna get something on the level of, you know, um, the transit scene from Rise of the Bees, but I definitely do think that we're gonna get some more info, especially as the weeks and months go on and people from the production come forward. In fact, Jason Schreier and Josh Cooley are actually pretty active on Twitter right now. Hopefully they see this video and they're like, you know what, I think I'm gonna get fired to scoop and they gave me a whole bunch of info to make a part two of this. But yeah, so far this is where we stand with the movie. I low-key wish some of this would have been kept, but at the same time I can kind of understand the movie is already pretty long as it is though maybe could have used a few extra 10 minutes i don't know like 10 minutes are nothing to me but maybe to you guys it's like a lot uh, personally i would not have mine but it is what it is but anyways guys that's gonna be it for this video 
I hope you guys enjoy. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below. Are there any scenes slash cult content or concepts that you wish were being kept? Like Aerial Bolt, Orion in the 16 at the arcade, some characters being added to the movie here and there? Let me know all about that in the comments down below. Transformers 1 has just broke the 75 million mark at this point, which is about to cover its budget at the very least. It still needs to gain a whole lot more before we can call this a success or a complete failure. So if you haven't watched the movie, I highly recommend you do. But so far we still don't have the numbers for the first two days of October. So until those drop, it's very hard to say how good or bad the movie is doing at the moment. But yeah, let's hope for the best. But anyways guys, that's it for this video. Hopefully you all enjoy. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Do the annoying YouTuber stuff at the algorithm like so much. And I will see you guys in the next video. Stay safe, guys. Anyways, guys, before we go, shout out to our amazing Patreon: Steve Martin, Climber 611 Inferno 65, Winslow Loves Hightower, Scout, Polly 666, Silverman, King Sparta, Super Silverman Headshot, Xavier the God, Stitch Productions, Scrub Lordo, and Predicate Hunter Plates. And also a big shout out to our channel members: Shane Labat and Dragon Phoenix, TF Cipher, and Laser Sin. Thank you all for your support, guys. It's much appreciated. It really helps me keep the channel going, and you get a few perks from. And link to the Patreon and channel membership in the comments down below with more details on them if it interests you. But anyways, thank you for your support guys, it's much appreciated, and I will see you all in the next video. Stay safe guys!